Hey guys, welcome back to Mind Over Matter. I'm sorry I wasn't uploading here for a while. Um, I had college come up and classes got hectic and a lot of work, so unfortunately I had to put YouTube on hold. But now that summer's here and classes are done, hopefully I can be uploading more and help you guys out some more. So today's video is going to be about disorder of written expression and how I deal with it, living with it, day in and day out. So, without further ado, let's get on with the video. What is disorder of written expression? Disorder of written expression can be a number of things. It can be the way you write. Sometimes the way you write can be scribbly or hard to read. Um, it could also be grammar, but it could also be in the way that you write and express your writing. I personally struggle with the writing side of it. I had the handwriting side of it when I was younger, but I was able to outgrow it, but I still struggle daily with the writing part. So how this could complicate things is that one, the writing side of it is it'll be hard to read your writing and understand what exactly it is you're saying because of that. The grammar part can, I don't personally struggle with the grammar part as much, so it's hard for me to say what it could complicate, but it could complicate your writing skills or the way you word things. And now for the part that I struggle with more personally is the writing side of it. Like for example, my teachers in college will ask me for a paper, like, I don't know, three simple pages, we'll say three pages. And in return, I give them, oh, I don't know, yeah, 12. 12 pages for a three-page essay. Now, sometimes it can be because I'm going into detail and my teachers find that amazing. But in the short run, it needs to be cut down. Or there's other times where there could be run-on sentences upon run-on sentences, or my grammar is just not right, or things like that. So that's how that could complicate that. And in a long run, that could affect like newsletters that you may have to write. It could affect your work, your livelihood, depending on your career path. Um, I know personally, sometimes when I'm talking with people or when I'm texting someone, writing an email, I have to be careful on how I word things and go back and reread multiple times so that way I know that I'm wording things properly and that it sounds professional or that the person I'm talking to or texting understands what exactly I'm saying because disagreements can occur really easily if you're not careful, at least in my experience, based on wording even though you're trying to make it sound proper in your head, it might not sound proper to someone else. Um, what's my personal experiences with it? Um, I was diagnosed when I was in the third or fifth grade, I think. And so I've had some experience with this as I am now going into my sophomore year of college in the fall. Um, I was bullied a lot growing up for it because kids would go to turn in their paper and they're like oh my word your book your essay is like 12 pages that's so much like what did you write a book and for me that was like a personal blow because I was so proud of my writing and it was like my heart and my soul I put everything into it I thought everything through and I thought it was amazing so that was hard for me but probably the hardest part was not the bullying but the feedback the feedback was the hardest part in the sense of seeing your paper marked up like that like the corrections it may not seem like a big deal to someone but in my personal experience and i think some of you guys can relate when you put your heart and soul into that writing and you think that you did it properly and you avoided your um learning disability popping up or making it sound like you're quote unquote normal um and then you get that paper back and you're red ink upon red ink upon red ink upon red ink. 
it can bring you down and it can put you in a tough spot. I've had days where I've come home just depressed from college because I thought I did so great on a paper, on a quiz, or on a writing assignment. But in reality, I didn't because I went too much into detail and I went past what they wanted for a um, length requirement or I've screwed up grammar or I have messed up wording things or missing those key points that they wanted me to hit because I was rambling on about something else. So it can be hard, I won't lie. Um, but things that have helped me cope with it are things like having a teacher, parent, loved one, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, read over your work and point out, hey, maybe try this or maybe try this. Like, coming from a person who loves and cares about you, I think is a lot easier than coming from someone you hardly know that you're only going to know for a few short months that you have them teaching you. So people who truly know your background, I feel, understand it more and are willing to work with you more. Um, that being said, there's no, like, here, there's no easy way to get about it. The handwriting side, if you put enough work into it and get some help with your handwriting and working on it, I mean, there's no instinct, there's no real cure for this learning disorder. It's a learning disorder. And so that being said, yes, your handwriting could get better, but the disorder of written expression will always still be with you. The grammar, yeah, you can you can get on your grammar, but you're still bound to mess up. And the same with your writing techniques. I have gone through writing classes. I have gone through English classes. I've gone through all of it. And even though I've learned how to work on it throughout the years, I still struggle with it. It's still there. It's still a part of who I am. And it will always be a part of who I am from now and until the day that I leave the earth. And that's hard to accept when you're judged for who you are or you're labeled as a kid who is just not listening to the teachers and is overriding because she thinks she's better than everybody else. When in reality, you're just doing what you thought you needed to to meet the requirements that you were given or answer the questions that you were given. So that is definitely a hard part. Um, in that sense, I've learned to accept the sort of written expression as part of who I am now, and I accept it, and I still write, I still do essays and papers. Are they still lengthy? Yes. No way to deny that. They are still lengthy. Um, that 12-page uh, thing I used as an example earlier, that was a real thing. That wasn't a made-up example. Um, so yeah, it can be it can be interesting, but there are some pros and cons to it. I've already listed the cons, but the pros can be that you can go into detail more than any other person can. Like, I look at my papers versus a friend's paper, and sometimes my papers are more detailed than theirs even come close to. And I'm not trying to say that I'm better than them or anything, but at the same time, my mind is thinking more in depth of what's going on and how to word it properly and have it come across properly. Um, you can also not have to worry about if there's a maximum page or if the minimum is higher up. You don't have to worry because honestly, like if your teacher gives you a six page minimum, at least in my experience, that's a breeze. I have that done within five minutes. Well, maybe not five minutes, like an hour. That's all the advice I have to offer today about disorder of written expression on, based on what I know and my experiences with it. I hope this helped you guys in some sort of way, whether you have it yourself or whether you know someone who has this learning disability and hopefully help you help them or help yourself. 
If you like this video or have any suggestions for new and upcoming videos, let me know in the comments down below and give this video a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching.